In this lecture, I want to show you how you can do lookups in Excel that involve ranges, like a lower and an upper boundary. I'm going to use three different formulas to solve this lookup problem. One approach is the sum product function, and another approach uses sumifs, and then I'm going to use the index function. Okay, so here we get a list of categories, the scores that belong to each category, and a description of each category. Now we have a list of companies, the scores that they actually got, and we need to do a lookup and find the category that belongs to that score. So you can see where the problem is here, that the scores that we received, so let's say I got this from a colleague, the scores that I received are in this format. So my first step is to get the scores in a format that I can deal with. So best is to split them up in a lower bound and an upper bound. I have different options to do that. One thing I can do is to use formulas. So I could maybe use the left and the right function and strip out the left side and then the right side. Or I could actually type them out because they're not that much. I could also use the text to columns. So I'm going to do that here. So all I have to do is insert a new column. I'm going to highlight this part. Go to data and use text to columns. Okay, so you can see we get this um, wizard. I have the option between delimited and fixed width. I'm going to go with delimited because they don't have the same width. So I have different numbers here. So we're going to go with next. Tab is not my delimiter, it's other, and it's this dash sign. So then we go next, and that's fine, and finish. Okay, so we get them on this side and this side. Here I don't have an upper bound, it's just one, but I can type it in. And I can call this, uh, this is the lower bound and upper bound. So now let's look at our options. How could we do the lookup? Company A got a score of 3, so this means that it belongs here to category 2. So one option that I have is to use the sumifs formula. Why? Because the sumifs does sum values, but I don't necessarily need it to sum the categories. All I need is that it gives me the category itself because they're unique to each of these sets. I can use the sumifs also because these are numbers. If my categories were not numbers, it's not going to work. So let's see how I could use that. I need a sum range. So the sum range is the value that I want to get back and that's my categories. That's this one. And let's remember the fixing. So I have to fix those with the F4. And the next thing is criteria range 1. I have two criterias, right? One is the lower bound and one is the upper bound. So let's start with the lower bound. That's my criteria range 1. We're going to press F4. And then let's look at the next argument. So I need to put the comma. And my criteria 1 is actually the score that this company had. So it's this one but I don't want it to be this score, I want it to be less than or equal than this score. So I have to use this, except that Excel is not going to like it if I press enter. So what I have to do is put it in quotation marks and then use the and sign. And then I can leave the formula. So now we can see it's three, but the 3 is still not right because what it's doing is it's adding up the 2 and the 1 here because I haven't added the second criteria. Let's go to criteria range 2. That's basically this one. I'm going to fix it. And we're going to do the same thing except that now we want bigger or equal to. And this is our score. Okay, so that looks good. I think I've done all the fixing and that falls in criteria range 2 and I can just double click it to expand. Okay, so let's have a look at this one is 102. That's category 6. Okay, so that's one way of doing this. 
Our second option is to use the sum product formula. And sum product works similarly to sum ifs because it's great for exceptions. And what I can do first is bring in my exceptions. And remember, whenever you bring in exceptions to the sum product formula, always open the brackets again. So this is my first exception. Let's not forget the fixing. And now I need less than and equal to this one. So here I don't need the quotation mark because that's a part of my first argument. And now we're gonna close brackets and bring in the second argument, which is for the upper bound. And for that, I need to use the multiplication sign because I'm for AND conditions, I need to multiply the result of the first condition with the second condition. And now I'm gonna highlight my second ones, press F4, and this one is bigger or equal to again my score and close brackets. So if I leave the formula right now, okay, let's see what we get. I have one. Why? If I, let's click on the array one and press F9. Okay, that's the matrix that I get back. It's zero, one, and then the rest is zeros because it allocates, so the first case, that's a zero because my criteria is not met. The second one is a one because that's met and the rest are zeros. Okay, so what the um, sum product function does, just press escape to leave, is that it goes through each one and assigns a true or false to them. So if I highlight this and press F9, you can see it better. You have true, true, false, and so on. And for the second one as well, just going to highlight, press F9, and you have false, true, and so on. The trues are ones, and the false values are zeros. So when you have the true multiplied by the false, it turns the true into a one and the false into a zero. And basically, that's how you end up with getting this to be zero, one, and so on. Okay, so we're on the right track. All we have to do is to multiply the results of this one with our categories. That's what I'm going to do now. And to do that, I need another bracket because I want to multiply the final result of this. So now multiply by this one. And this is something that I have to fix as well with the F4 key. Okay, and that works great as well. But they only work great because I have numbers. If I don't have that, so let's say I have some text called like C1 or C2 here, you see what happens? They turn to zero with the sum ifs and you get errors for the sum product ones. Okay, so if you do have text and you don't have values there, what you can do is you could use custom formatting. So if you have the same text and a number in there, so let's say C1, C2, C3, and so on, you can do custom formatting. I'm just gonna press Control-1 for the shortcut. And here under custom, I just need to put this in quotations, put a C, and then I can use a placeholder for numbers, and that's like the hash sign, or I can use zero and say OK. In this way, I can get the same text in every single cell, but still have my cells as numbers. The last option is to use the index function. So the first argument in the index function is the range where you have the answer in. We have our answer somewhere in here. I'm going to fix that as well. And then we're going to use match. The thing about match is that it returns the position to the index function on how many rows it should move down, okay? Because I'm in the row argument of the index. You can see here, that's how many rows it should go down and start counting from here, so from the first cell. Now, what am I looking for? I'm looking for this three. The next thing is, where am I looking it up? Well, 
I can look it up here. Just going to fix that. Now, it's not going to find a 3 there as an exact match. So in this case, I shouldn't use the 0 here. I need to use the 1. And this is something that I actually hardly ever use because whenever I use index and match, I always look for an exact match. But this is the few cases where using the 1 or the minus 1 comes really handy. So what the 1 means, it says it's less than. So it basically looks through your list and your list has to be in ascending order. So it looks through your list and it finds the biggest value that is smaller than or equal to your lookup value. So in this case, our 3. Okay, so that would work because then I can completely ignore the upper bound. I don't need it for this function. I think I need another bracket, but my fixing should be good. And that works great. So the good thing about the index function here is that it doesn't care if you have text or numbers. So if I would just, let's just copy this part here. You can see index works, but these two, they don't work. You can see there are always different ways of getting the answer. The more options you have, the more Excel formulas you know, the faster you can get there. And not only that, but you can pick the formula that works best with the situation. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.